Hello everyone. My name is Yusuke Yoshida. This talk is about non-committing encryption with constant ciphertext expansion from standard assumptions. Another title that characterizes this talk will be Amplify Weak Non-Committing Encryption. This is joint work with Fuyuki Kitagawa, Keita Kusagawa, and Keisuke Tanaka. First, I'm going to introduce overview of this work and some related works. The topic of this work, non-committing encryption, is a public key encryption scheme with a special security property, which is used to establish secure channels in adaptively secure multi-party computation protocols, where the adversary corrupts some parties during the protocol execution, and obtain secret key and randomness are used by encryption of the public key encryption. In exchange for achieving such a special security, non-committing encryption has several drawbacks. For example, the size of secret key must be larger than the size of encrypted message, and the probability of the encryption error can also be equal to zero. And in particular, the size of ciphertext tends to be large. So we focus on ciphertext expansion that is the length of ciphertext per each message bit. Public key expansion is also defined in a similar way. In our previous work of the last stage script, we constructed an NC scheme with order log lambda ciphertext expansion from obviously sample version of Camelon encryption. We instantiated it based on the DDH problem. In this work, we instantiate it based on the LWA problem. I'm not going to explain details of this construction, but basically, it's a combination of the lattice-based camera hash function and the LWA-based hash encryption proposed by the Tornator. Then we use this camera encryption to construct non committing encryption with constant ciphertext expansion. However, at this point, the scheme has problem with correctness and security. So we define weak version of NCE and prove the construction is indeed this weak non-committing encryption. The construction, as well as the previous one, is similar to the construction of trapped function from the CDH problem by Gag and Hajabari. Finally, we show how to amplify the weak NCE into full-fledged NCE while keep its ciphertext expansion constant. In this transformation, we use an information theoretical primitive called wiretap calls. This is a list of previous NC schemes constructed based on standard assumptions. As you can see, ciphertext expansion has been getting better and better, and at last, we achieved constant ciphertext expansion based on the DDH or LW problem. We also show that when instantiated from LW, public key expansion is better than our DDH based scheme. I'd like to mention that in a concurrent work by Brachiraski et al., presented in the latest TCC, they show similar result. However, the technique is different to ours. Here, I give a brief comparison. Our result is obtained by improving our previous work, whose idea of constructing NCE has some similarity with NC scheme by Beaver. While they improved NC scheme by Hemingway et al., which is similar to NC scheme by J et al. As I said before, we defined weak version of NCE, while they introduced a primitive called backed encryption with partial equality. BBE. We use error correcting code with rate greater than one half to construct wiretap calls which amplified our weak NCE. While they use error correcting code that is able to correct almost one half fraction of errors. This is other related works. The non-committing encryption scheme by Viva 
and its generalization by Damgard and Nielsen. In the three rounds of communication to transmit a message, unlike public encryption, they use the third round to deal with the weak security of NCE. Kanetti et al. proposed the NCE scheme with both ciphertext and public key expansion, almost one, using indistinguishability of fascication in the common reference string model. There are some relaxed notions of NCE. Those have essence to contraction. Receiver or sender non committing encryption consider the case of only one of receiver or sender is corrupted, and one of secret key or random SR is revealed to the adversary. Somewhat non committing encryption is able to explain a simulated ciphertext as the encryption of a limited number of message M prime. As opposed to full-fledged non-committing encryption, is able to explain as any message M prime. I also mentioned to another line of research, which asks a natural question: How far can we make in a security definition so that it still can be transformed into full-fledged one? Weak forms of one wayness in the CPA and in the CCA security are considered so far and studied how to amplify them to full fledged in the CPA or in the CCA security. This work can be seen as one of this line of research in the case of non committing encryption. The difference between this work and these previous works is the previous weak security notions are defined in the game based manner while we defined weak NCE in the simulation-based manner. Next, I'm going to explain how we define weak NCE and why our NCE scheme is weak NCE. Before explaining weak NCE, I will start with semantic security and standard NCE. In the real experiment, the adversary chooses a message M. Then, the key generation algorithm gen generates a public key PK. Here we can regard the randomness used by key generation algorithm as the secret key. Then, the message is encrypted by encryption algorithm with randomness R, and the ciphertext CT is generated. The adversary receives public key and ciphertext and outputs something. In the ideal world, the public key and the ciphertext is output by simulation algorithm SIM. In particular, this simulation algorithm does not take input the message M. Public key encryption scheme is semantically secure. If these experiments are computationally indistinguishable, Note that in this definition, the adversary chooses the message M before receiving the public key PK. But we can easily fix this using hybrid encryption with one time pad. This transformation also works for the case of non committing encryption. Next, I show the security definition of NCE. Security of NCE capture the situation where the adaptive adversary corrupts sender and receiver in MPC and obtains security and randomness. So the adversary receives FK and R in the last of the experiment. Non-committing encryption is secure if there exists not only simulation algorithm but also opening algorithm which takes M as input and outputs secret key and randomness. And the real experiment and the ideal experiment are computationally indistinguishable. Here, we define weak security for NCE. This definition involves a function L. The real experiment is identical to the previous NCE security. In the ideal experiment, 
when simulating ciphertext, the simulator is allowed to take input some personal information about the message L of M. Thus, even if these experiments are indistinguishable, the, the adversary may obtain L of M from the ciphertext. So, this is weak security. For example, if L is a constant function, then the weak security is the same as the first rate security. If L is uh, the identity function, the weak security ensures nothing. Depending on L, we can define various levels of security. Next, I'm going to explain why our NCE is weak. We construct an NCE scheme from Cameron encryption. Let's consider NCE for one bit message X for now. The ciphertext of the scheme consists of three parts. Cameron hash of the message Y and two L bit strings K0 and K1. In particular, encryption of zero is Y, K0, and a uniformly random string. Encryption of one is Y, uniformly random string, and K1. Secret key of this scheme is indexed with a random bit Z. The receiver can recompute KZ from the Cameron hash Y and the secret key SKZ. Then, compare if the recomputed KZ prime is equal to KZ in the ciphertext. If they are the same, the decryption result is Z. Otherwise, 1 minus Z. Unfortunately, this decryption may adopt the wrong message when message bit z is not equal to the encrypted message x, and the random string in the ciphertext accidentally coincides with kz. This happens with probability epsilon, that is, 1 over 2 to l plus 1. For security, we want to say that the ciphertext is indistinguishable from the simulated ciphertext, which consists of y, k0, and k1. However, this holds only if g is equal to x. This is because, as a result of corruption, the adversary obtains skz and thus run kz, which is clearly different from the random string in the real ciphertext if x and z are different. Thus, the adversary can obtain the message bit with probability one half. When encrypting any bit message, the ciphertext consists of a Cameron hash value y and two n bit strings. Since the size of Cameron hash is independent of the message length, ciphertext expansion of this scheme is 2L plus small order 1, which is constant if L is constant. Let me summarize the previous slide. We construct a MC scheme with constant ciphertext expansion. However, it only satisfies weak correctness and weak security. Where weak correctness is that each bit of decryption result lifts with probability epsilon. Weak security says that the adversary can obtain half of the message bits from the ciphertext. Here, the information obtained by the adversary is denoted by L of X. Next, we introduce a tool to amplify weak NCE, that is, wiretap code. The situation we faced can be modeled by Wynat's wiretap channel model. The decryption error for each bit can be seen as binary symmetric channel, and the adversary can obtain partial information of the message L of X through binary erasure channel. This situation, where the adversary is affected by more noise than the receiver, is a natural situation in wireless communication. It is well studied how to transmit the message correctly to the receiver while keep it secure from the adversary. Encoding algorithm of wiretap calls uses random names S 
and like standard error correcting codes. Correctness of wiretap codes ensures that the original message is decoded. Berara et al. formalized security of wiretap codes in cryptographic manner. To put it simply, encoding of any message does not give any information to the adversary through the channel. Rate of the code is the length of the message of the length of code words X. The rate cannot be larger than the capacity of the channel. In general, the capacity is entropy of uniformly random bit U under the condition of CHA, that is information the adversary obtained through channel CHA. Minus entropy of uniformly random bit U conditioned on, under the information the receiver obtained through channel CHA. Concretely, in the case of channel 2 receiver is PSC epsilon, and the channel 2 adversary is PEC 0.5, the capacity is 1 half minus A2 epsilon, where A2 denotes the binary entropy function. In this work, we define a new security definition for wiretap codes. We call it conditional invertibility. This is non committing or deniable style security of wiretap codes. In the real experiment, the adversary receives not only partial information of the code word L of X, but also randomness S using the encoding algorithm. In the ideal experiment, code word X is simulated without the message M, and the invert algorithm attributes randomness S which is consistent to the message. Since wiretap codes are information theoretical primitive, the adversary can be unbounded. We show that existing wiretap codes satisfies this security notion. Finally, we construct full-fledged NC scheme from weak NC scheme and wiretap codes, which satisfies conditional invertibility. The construction is very simple. We first encode a message by wiretap codes, then encrypt the code word with weak NCE. So if a text is decrypted by weak NCE, then decoded by wiretap codes. Wiretap codes fix weak security and weak correctness of NCE. Next, I will show outline of its security proof. I'm going to describe the real experiment of the amplified NC scheme. First, the adversary chooses the message M. Then, key generation algorithm of weak NCE outputs a public key. Then, the message is encoded by wiretap codes and encrypted with weak NCE. The adversary obtains secret key SK and randomness using encryption procedure, that is, S and R. We move to a hybrid experiment using weak security of NCE. Now, the public key is simulated by SimGen, and the ciphertext is simulated by SimEnc, where the simulator takes only L of X as input, which is obtained through binary ratio channel. Then, open algorithm explains SK and R. Next, we move to the IDR experiment using conditional invertibility of the wiretap codes. The code word X is simulated without the message M. Then, encoding randomness S is inverted. This is the simulator of amplified NCE. And this is open algorithm. Thus, we have constructed NC scheme with constant ciphertext expansion. But what is the constant exactly? Finally, we optimize the constant. The weak NC scheme has ciphertext expansion to L plus small order 1. And its correctness error for each message bit happens with probability epsilon equal to 1 over 2 to L plus 1. 
And the via top cause for BEC 0.5 to adversary and the BSC epsilon to receiver have rate at most one half minus H2 epsilon. And the ciphertext expansion of the amplified energy scheme is the ciphertext expansion of weak energy E over the rate of wire top cords, plus 1. Where plus 1 comes from the hybrid encryption with one time part. This allows the adversary to choose a message depending on the public key. Roughly estimated, the ciphertext expansion takes minimum value approximately 27, when the constant L is 5. To sum up this talk, NCE is a key tool to establish secure channels in adaptively secure multi-party computation. We defined weak non committing encryption and constructed it from communal encryption. We amplified the weak NC scheme using wiretap codes which satisfies conditional invertibility. The resulting NC scheme achieves the first constant cybertext expansion. I did not explain in this talk, but the LW-based scheme improves public key expansion over the DDS-based scheme. That's all. Thank you for watching.